Fortnite have just released an anti-cheat update which could definitely affect you because it could be the difference between you logging into competitive games or not. There are literal Windows features that you have to enable on your computer otherwise you may not be able to play the game. So today I'm going to be talking about them, explaining them and showing you how to enable them therefore you do not run into any issues. If your friend's games are not launching and they're confused this is probably the reason so share it with them. Basically there are new PC requirements for tournaments. So firstly you have to be on a Windows PC which I guess is a given but you also have to enable two Windows security features that are not that easy to find. The first one is TPM, which is shorthand for Trusted Platform Module. They explain it down here as a secure hardware component. But what it is, is a secure crypto processor that implements the ISO and the IEC 11889 standard. Yes, very, very, very confusing. In short, it is designed to provide hardware-based security functions, which includes verifying the boot process started from a trusted combination of hardware and software and storing disk encryption keys. By default, this is integrated into every motherboard and simply put its primary purpose is to create a secure environment for checking system integrity authenticating users and saving keys and passwords now the reason this is required is of course if you look at all of this they are taking legal action against cheaters and other rule breakers they filed a lawsuit against someone who stole Fortnite accounts and resold them so yeah um definitely don't do that and they also had a lawsuit against a player who cheated in tournaments yeah they're really ruining lives out here but you know other people are, i guess also ruining lives by cheating but yeah no really just not worth it the tpm feature in particular i'll get onto the other one but tpm works to prevent cheating by ensuring the integrity of the operating system and game files are all up to scratch this makes it more difficult for like i don't know cheating programs and whatever they're using to inject code or manipulate the game data which is of course crucial in maintaining a fair competitive game and also just for general security this is good anyway because tpm protects your account and data this means when you're making in-game purchases and your user accounts hold you know physical value in that case this helps protect your data from hacking and unauthorized access. I guess this now makes sense why it was mentioned in the guise of, you know, someone who would stole Fortnite accounts. And as promised, touching on Secure Boot, Secure Boot, they say, is a security feature that helps prevent malware from being inserted into the PC's boot process. They say that Secure Boot is a security feature that helps prevent malware from being inserted into the PC's boot process, which is a simpler way to put it. It's found in the modern UEFI, which is Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. And within this firmware, its primary purpose is to protect the system from malicious software by ensuring that only trusted digitally signed operating systems and drivers are loaded during the boot process. It works by verifying digital signatures of applications on your system and it's generally just a protection against malware so if you don't have this on you want it on anyway. These things are going to benefit you outside of Fortnite and of course bringing it down to its core this is just anti-cheat protection through and through. Like the anti-cheat that Fortnite use I'm com I've completely forgot what it's called but it essentially relies on these features particularly and I guess what they've done now is if you don't have them on you physically can't launch the game or physically can't go into a tournament i'm not sure how it checks that but just know that it does and you need to disable or sorry enable these settings and now getting into how to enable them i'm actually realizing that tpm is also known as tpm 2.2 and it actually isn't available on every pc yeah if your pc was not you know shipped in the last five years it likely isn't capable of running trusted platform module i've also found out that this is a requirement to run windows 11 or to at least upgrade to windows 11 it's one of the requirements out of a hardware permitting thing but yeah, this is good in that case as well because you can, you know, switch to Windows 11. I've got a whole video showing you how to optimize that and it is generally better for performance. Now, what we firstly need to do is to check if our PC can run TPM. Now, to do this, you can go to settings, go to privacy and security or update and security, then go to Windows security. In here, you want to go to device security. And if you do not see this right here that says security processor, this means that you do not have it enabled and you need to do so. If this is green, don't worry. And you can just skip onto the next step, which is ensuring that secure boot is enabled. Which you can actually see right below here. I completely forgot. Yeah, no, it's here. You don't really need to do much more. If these both are green, you're good to go. Just drop a like and subscribe. If not, I'm sorry, you have to keep watching. Now, starting with TPM, we have to get into our BIOS. I know that sounds a little bit scary, but trust me, it is not. This is completely safe. What you want to do is go over to your Windows settings again. Go to Windows Update, Advanced Options. Scroll down until you see Recovery. If you're on Windows 10, this is a little bit different. You have to go to Settings, which you already probably were on. Update and Security, Recovery. And then once you're in here, which for some reason is not letting me click into, I am on a fully stripped Windows OS. So it's a little bit buggy. But when you click into this, you'll leave be able to click restart now into recovery or advanced startup. For most of you, it'll say advanced startup. Now, if this doesn't work, what you can do is when you're restarting your PC, so you can just restart it normally, manually, just turn it off, turn it back on. You want to find the key that lets you enter your bias. It should come up on your screen, but it'll either be F2, F10, F12, or delete. So just try all of them, spam them all, and just make sure you're spamming them as you're starting your PC. And eventually one of them will work and you'll get into your BIOS. Now, whatever way you did this, if you were, you know, you did the advanced 
startup and you restarted your PC, you may see a screen that says troubleshoot in this case. It's probably a blue screen. You want to go to advanced options, UEFI firmware settings and restart and then it will load you into the BIOS. So at this point, we're all in the BIOS. Now what you're going to do is look for a sub menu in your BIOS. You could be on advanced mode, easy mode, but it should say UEFI BIOS or maybe it's labeled advanced security, trusted computing, whatever it may be. There is also in most BIOSes a search bar in the top right hand corner somewhere. If you can click there and just search on the advanced tab, usually you can type in either of these things, advanced security, trusted computing, whatever it may be. And in either of these options, you'll find a toggle to enable TPM. This also could be labeled a security device, security device support, TPM state, AMD FTPM switch, AMD PSP FTPM, Intel PTT or Intel platform trust technology. Yes, very confusing. Every motherboard, every system is different. So I'll also link down below an article on how you can do this if I'm not explaining it very correctly, but I'll try my best. I'm trying my best, but it's really as simple as just clicking onto these options and turning it from disabled to enabled. Now, once we've done that, we're still in the BIOS, assuming that you also need to enable secure boot. You need to switch the PC boot mode from the one enabled as legacy BIOS, also known as CSM mode to UEFI BIOS or UEFI slash BIOS. Now there should be a sub menu or a tab at the top that says boot. Very, very simple. Click into there and go through these settings. Try not to knock anything and you'll need to choose UEFI to be the first or only option. So some of you will have options to enable both UEFI and legacy CSM, but make sure to set it to just UEFI. You want to get rid of legacy or, you know, CSM entirely. There may also be a literal option that says secure boot in CSM. So it will say CSM. You click into that and it says secure boot. In that case, just enable that. But you do need to make sure your boot mode is still nonetheless on UEFI. If it's on legacy, this isn't going to work. And that is pretty much everything. Hopefully this did work for you. If you're still having issues, just go into your, you know, find your manufacturer of your motherboard. You can do this by downloading Specky, S-P-E-C-C-Y. It's an application. It's totally free. And it will tell you what your motherboard is. If you can't identify it, just search up like Asus ROG, how to enable whatever these features are, or just go to the links in the description. Cause I have been, you know, kind of regurgitating this from an article with my own, you know, added knowledge to kind of make this easier for you. But nonetheless, it's still hard to explain. There's only so much I can show myself. We all have different motherboards, different systems, and it, that makes it difficult by default. But if you're still having issues and you really are struggling, comment down below or join my discord server. And I'm happy to help you guys out personally.